one. I mean, part like I'm going to do the intro. And hey, Dave from Head Games, and we were at part 99 of digitizing a set of heads for my car and for you guys. Jeff the Coyote, Coyote nightmare. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I was so excited for this, and, and like, this killed me. <laughs> this, this brought yeah. so much distraught on myself. All right, so this is part many of this coyote situation. Um, so I, we can go back into the videos. At the first one, I ported ahead. Uh, this is only for the Gen 1 Coyote. It's been a, a very tough thing. And, it, and it's actually for my car originally, and it has not worked out for me because I ported ahead, I did a boss head, sent it out, or I should say I did a Gen 1 regular head, got the CNC port on a boss head, thought the geometry was wrong because it's two different heads, at least that's what we thought. And then I sent my original Gen 1 heads like off my car, I got the motor pulled out of it and all that stuff, and it was still an issue. And then I was thinking maybe I got a little lazy and I, uh, I asked Matt to digitize all right, blend all the ports in. I asked Matt to digitize it, and he gave me the middle finger. Uh, he looked at it all, and we decide the geometry is just completely messed up. Like, the ports weren't in the right spot, is what I mean. And none of the ports were, like, you can't go back on that. So what I had to do is I got another Gen 1 head. I ported it. I actually changed the ports. I wasn't completely happy with what I had originally. I made them a little bit better, went on and off the flow bench, did not do it in front of the camera because we already already made a video about that. I wasn't trying to make a, a I, don't get me wrong, this is still a saga, but I didn't want to make that saga longer. So now we are three heads in, we're about 30 or 40 hours, I think, into just trying to figure this stuff out and we're getting closer to making a cut and that's where we're going to start today. So here's the boss head and the chamber they stopped doing the chambers on this one because i originally did a gen 1 head and the gen or the boss heads don't have that they don't have that feature in there so it's both both of them look like this and uh the gen 1 has this little knot so he's like oh we're not going to do that but what we noticed was cut chamber had this feature in here and i'm not sure where that came from because i never made that i never made this nut I honestly didn't even notice it. it wasn't until Matt brought it to my attention that uh, I saw that the chamber was like completely different than this side and why should they be different for both sides they shouldn't be they should be all the same just like the gen 1 or the bosses so that was our first step when we brought the chamber geometry in cut everything to the deck this line was nice and smooth we were going around and looking over this side there's a bump there is a bump in this wall and i had to go look over the other cores verify that it was the cores and not the geometry that came into master cam on the exhaust side uh it was pretty sad there was the first thing i noticed was and i mentioned it in another video that the port was oblonged and it was because the roof was ported I guess much more is the best way I could put it. And then the exhaust wasn't even touched. And that made for lots and lots of blending. And it did the same thing on the other side, as I said, it, it just ported the roof and it didn't port the floor. So then you had to go in here by hand. There were some definite geometry issues going on. What Matt noticed was that the geometry on this side was lower than this side. So pretty much all the geometry when they went to digitize it was off. And uh, now you have a port that is not only lopsided, and we see it actually all over the cylinder head, but it was very prominent in this area and on the exhaust. And I saw this line in here not lining up with the other port. So red is one side of the port, blue is the other. You can see that these lines do not line up with each other. 
And we don't even touch factory lines at head games, so seeing the data come in like this, I knew something was wrong with it. I went and looked over the cores, and I had to bring it up to Dave that we really should redo this entire thing, start it from scratch. It's really good to have good employees around you who will not settle for just doing stuff. They want to do stuff to the next level, and that's what Matt did here. Matt wouldn't let me um, just be lazy and and just, uh, and, and also I'm not looking at the data. So Matt's looking at the data, and when Matt looked at the data, he said, this ain't gonna work. I had a, I had an idea that it was the data, but you kinda, you trust other people. So you, we trusted uh, somebody else to digitize this, to run our program through it, and then that's before we owned the machine. And now that we own a machine, things have changed. And things are here, and now we put it in, into into Mastercam and that's when Matt realized that there was an actual geometry issue which we couldn't send out to all of you. So it's a really good thing that, um, you know, when you have employees that just don't settle, they want to take everything to the next level. Obviously starting over and redoing everything was a big, big deal because it's a lot of man hours, it's a lot of work, but it was absolutely needed. I think that this is going to be, um, this is going to be the right, the right path to go. Now, uh, we didn't get a lot, of the, a lot of the digitizing part of it, um, but we're gonna show you the end result. You guys see what I see? You see the fins I put in there? So totally different than the last one. I'll show a picture of the last one I did. And you'll notice that the port is no longer oblong. That's right. So I don't ever touch the OD of here from the factory. This is on like most cylinder heads, although I did think about it on this one just because everybody else does it. They make them gigantic and I wasn't gonna do that. But um, but I did do something that nobody else does and that's making fins out of the guide bosses uh, and then go all the way out to the edge of the port. Intake port. This is, you notice that the lines are the same now and what Matt has in here is the clay. That's what you, you it's the dark part of that. So he clays up half the port and you clay up the hole for the guide ball so that way when the probe comes down and it's pressing on it, it's not going to go into a hole.
here she is check it out we have a very symmetrical port now you can see the port is pretty much how i made it by hand and it has my fin in it so i put a fin on both sides here and it looks dashing now we are ready for guides and the valve job this thing i'm i'm just spinning wait wait i got more to show you we have a symmetrical combustion chamber again we have all cnc'd now you will notice that there is some hand blending in here so matt blended this thing by hand already and a lot of people think that because you see and see ahead that they're all going to be the same well uh, here is showing you that the castings are pretty close but they are not exactly the same there is different heights of where it needs to be blended because it's a casting and not all castings are going to be the same but we can hand blend these in and make that all the same in the exhaust port you see my fins how i did it by hand you can see it again here with the CNC. I think it matched it beautifully. And it looks like a round port. Uh, and it has all the features that I wanted. It, it was very important to me that it had this fin, this fin, and all the fins in the exhaust port are all here. So it comes off the guide, comes off the guide. Now you'll notice here is not touched and that's not touched on purpose because I know that if we were to blend all this out to here, it would change the shape of the port right in this area. And you can see it did like a little kick out and that's from, from trying to make a fin. Sometimes it'll, it'll make like little pieces here. So I, I didn't want to bring it all the way out here, but I am super happy with how this came out. So what's the future hold for this? I don't know if this particular cylinder head actually is going to go on Charlie Barnes car from JPC racing. Charlie Barnes has a really fast, Boss 302 that comes out of the JPC racing. Adam Hum builds the engines for it. And I'm really happy that we're gonna start putting this thing through its paces, doing what the head games thing does, and that's make power. We are going to put all GSC valve train in it. So GSC, Brett Barber, and myself all work to collaborate together on coming up with some really killer valve train packages for these. And GSC is currently working on camshafts for Gen 1, Gen 2, and Gen 3. So we know that we're gonna make some jam. It's gonna be a little bit different than most people do, um, at least camshaft specs, but I think it's gonna be a really, really killer package. All right, so you guys need to comment below. Let me know what you wanna see because this is not, this is just a gen one and I know it's been like a trilogy. I keep calling it a saga, but it's like a trilogy of all the trials and tribulations that I've been through trying to get this done not only for my own car, but for you guys too. And I'm so happy to see it taken off. We actually have a bunch of coyotes here now. Now that is what the next thing I'm gonna do. If you guys wanna see, we have Voodoo, we have Gen 2, and we have Gen 3. If you guys wanna see those videos, if you wanna see some of the R&D that we're gonna put into it, what parts we're gonna put into it, uh, digitizing, CNC, whatever you wanna see, be sure to comment below. That does it for us today. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Toodles.